So, good afternoon everyone. We are gathered here again after a brief break. Uh, last month uh, we were all upstate. So, uh, after a break in Vedanta, we are back at it again. <coughs> so, we will start with a uh, small chant. Oh, Asatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya, Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya, Om Shanti 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 Hi. Oh. So today's uh, Vedanta topic is the ten aspects of the human mind. So, uh, it is kind of like, uh, you know, uh, Vedanta is big on uh, spelling things out and, uh, make, and giving like specific definitions. So, before we get into the topic itself, a small little analogy, you know. <clears throat> you know, when we talk about physics, right, science, hard science, physics, what is the most famous equation that comes to our mind and we think of like, right, E equals mc square, right. When you say physics, when you say Albert Einstein, nuclear physics, that one formula has filtered into the everyday lives of everyone, E equals mc square, right. Uh, well, I studied physics in my undergrad. And my physics professor was of the impression that all great ideas are simple, but not all simple ideas are great. Meaning that you, you hear, oh, e equals mc square, yeah, that is, uh, we kind of like get an idea that it is related to physics, great. Now, <clears throat> of all the people that who have heard about that equation, a few, a good number would know what it actually is means the terms at least e is energy equals there's a mathematical sign m is the mass and c is the velocity of light okay great and you lose a lot of people right at the last term velocity of light oh what what is velocity how much is the velocity of light 300000 meters per second and you square that that's an enormous amount of energy so if you go another step back the, the subset of people who know what it actually stands for starts becoming less and less and less. And, and we are just talking about the equation E equals mc square. Right? Now, I had the fortune or the misfortune of actually proving it. Now, if you look at the actual proof of the equation, the end result is simple enough E equals mc square. There is uh, a good three page mathematical and physical proof front and back. You have to go through three pages of very torturous and hairy mathematics to get to the simple distillation of E equals mc square. Now, when you present the ultimate truth in that equation, starting wherever you are with all the different assumptions, right, and you go through all these complicated processes, and you end up with E equals mc square, the truth, and that gets propagated in the society at large as a true idea. Why I am uh, saying all this is because the central tenet of Vedanta, Tattvamasi, is much like that. We have heard, I am, you are that, or I am that. We have heard that uh, enough number of times, right? It is uh, that one idea, Tattvamasi, Aham Brahmasmi, that has kind of become the quintessential Vedantic idea, which is, which has suffused itself out there in the society, much like E equals mc square. When we say physics, you, you say E equals mc square. When you say Vedanta, you hear, oh, Tattvamasi, I am that. 
but much like how you have to go through very specific you know very specific training and a whole lot of mathematics and everything to arrive at e equals mc square much akin to that before you arrive at tattvamasi before you experience in your being and before you can truly claim to be that to be brahman there's also a whole lot of background a whole lot of processes that one has to go through now today's topic the 10 aspects of the human mind again much like e equals mc square when you start breaking down you know the specific uh, elements oh m is the mass c is the velocity of light square all that right much like that in the vedantic uh, in the vedantic scheme of the universe another common uh, idea that we hear is that the world is an illusion maya right we hear a lot about the maya brahman is simple you know you are brahman the one truth the one non dual truth maya is complicated because we live in this everyday maya and it has the captivating energy to make that one reality appear in many dualities and the 10 aspects of the mind is one small attempt to understand how the maya projects the illusion how do we get there even before we get to the 10 aspects of the maya <coughs> devi which is why in the last class, uh, if you remember, we were going through the mantras one by one, right? The first mantra in the Devi Sukta goes, Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Vishnu Mayeti Shabdhita Namastasyai 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 Namonnama Vishnu Mayeti Shabdhita Meaning that, Hey Devi, you the one who are the projector of the maya the maya aspect has vastly three qualities to it mainly three qualities and this is something we have also uh, very familiar if you are familiar with the language of yoga you are very familiar with these three already rajas tamas and sattvic the rajas tamas and sattvic these are the three aspect and the sattvic in the Vedantic term, we also call it Jnana. It is the Devi that has these three powers. The power of Rajas, the power of Tamas and the power of Jnana. Now, what does Rajas do? Rajas, both Rajas and Tamas. In Sanskrit, the word goes, <coughs> the terminology for it is Vikshepa Avarana and Gnana. Vikshepa is the aspect of the Rajas, meaning that one of the powers of the, of the illusion is to project something that is not the truth think of this is a very famous analogy in uh, in vedanta think of like uh, in the evening right you're taking a walk and it's the twilight and you see from a distance maybe about 10 15 feet see a piece of rope and if you get confused and if you confuse the rope to be a snake what happens there is you're confusing the rope to be an illusionary snake the snake does not exist the reality is the rope but because of the illusion the rope is projected as a snake very similarly if you are in a desert you know the oasis hot air right if you see from a distance hot air is projected 
as an oasis, as water. But the more you keep chasing the water, only when you get near it, you realize, oh, wait a minute, this is an illusion. In the same way, the world, the concept that we keep calling as Maya, is projected as something different than what the true reality, the Brahman, is. That aspect is called Vikshepa, which is a Rajasic, uh, which is the property, which is the Rajasic uh, power of, of the Devi. Now, in this Rajasic, how the moment you say, okay, great, uh, you're uh, trying to say, okay, it's being projected as something that's not there, how does it manifest? And that's where we come to the 10 aspects of the human mind. So, we have heard of the pancha koshas, right? The annamaya kosha, the pranamaya kosha, the manomaya kosha, the vignanamaya kosha, and the anandamaya kosha. Of the three koshas, the vikshepa, the projection aspect, works on the mind, the manomaya kosha. Now, the, we'll briefly go over what the rajasic aspect how the Rajasic aspect manifests in this Manomaya Kosha. They spell out 10 the Upanishads. In the Upanishads, in the Brihadaranika Upanishad, 10 distinct aspects of the human mind are spelled out. They are, and the collective of these 10 aspects is what we perceive as the human mind. First, I'll go over the Sanskrit names and then we'll go over each one of them in, uh, in English. <coughs> Kama, the 10 aspects in order are Kama, Sankalpa, Shraddha, uh, Kama, Sankalpa, Vichikitsa, Shraddha, Ashraddha. Dhriti Adhriti Hrihi Brihi Dihi. I'll just repeat it again. Kama Sankalpa Vichikitsa Shraddha Ashraddha Dhriti Adhriti Hrihi Brihi Dihi. These 10 different characteristics together constitute the Manomaya Kosha. We will go over each one of them very briefly. So, the first one most of us have heard in most unfortunate consequences, Kama. Uh, it is a much, how to put it, in, in, in the common parlance, it is kind of gotten maligned, you know, Kama in different as in different contexts however the broader meaning of karma is sensory desire sensory as in the five senses to have any kind of an inclination toward any one of the senses taste smell touch sight and sound to have any kind of an inclination, meaning that want. Oh, I want to taste some chai. You know, I wanna, I wanna see a movie. I wanna smell a good scent. So on and so forth. The five senses. The moment you have that seed of wanting, that is called karma, and it's the mind where it originates from. And the moment you have that seed implanted in you, right? And the moment you are expending energy toward that, like for example, if you want a cup of chai, you can either make it yourself or you have to like at least go to a shop, take the money out, pay them, then get the cup, drink. Think of all the energy you are expending to satiate that desire. And the greater the desire, the more effort we are putting to ingratiate the desire and the more you are engaging 
with the outer world and the more you are getting sucked into the maya, projection, vikshepa, that is kama. And by the way, all of this, each that each desire that comes into your mind, that is what you call a vritti. Vritti. And then that is why we have the greatest tool to address that vritti, which is the yoga. Yoga chitta vritti nirodaha, meaning that the central tenet, the central idea of yoga, and think of also the kind of yoga that we do, Raja Yoga, which is exactly to address this Rajasic aspect of the mind. All of these, all of these, all of these um, concepts are very deeply interconnected. Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodha. So that's the first aspect, Kama. The second aspect is Sankalpa. Sankalpa. It's a beautiful word. We use that quite often in India. It's, in, it's used in a lot of concept, uh, lot of contexts. Sankalpa means that you have made a resolution to get something done. When you think of a resolution, right, what comes to your mind? Oh, I should have this done, you know. I have resolved to get this done. I have resolved to go to the DMV and argue with the clerk to make sure. My, <laughs> to, 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 get, to get my uh, license renewed on time. I have resolved to pick a fight with the cashier at Walgreens. Uh, so on and so forth. It's a it's a resolution, right? And also, just think of whenever you have a resolution, right? What usually follows? Action. It's the resolve again that gets you into acting into the world, which is again a very rajasic aspect. And the moment you are getting drawn into the world is the moment where the mind is also scattering. Vikshepa. The third one is Vichikitsa. Vichikitsa, meaning the mind is always suspicious. It's very easy, it's very hard to convince someone now. Like uh, if a salesperson comes to you and says, Oh, this does X, Y, and Z, they go, Are you sure? Prove it. You know, in fact, the whole enterprise of science, you know is based on the cons you begin by saying oh, no no this is this cannot be falsifying to falsify something uh, an idea is not true until it is falsifiable you start from the premise right so that aspect of the mind is called vichikitsa which is followed by shraddha 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 is an unbreakable trust. It is like this firm, it is beyond belief, it is beyond, uh, it is like, it is like a complete union of your mind with what you, you firmly believe is the truth. For example, uh, can't include everyone in this, but there are some flat earthers, but most people believe. <laughs> That earth is round, you know, that earth is a sphere, that, that earth is a sphere and we live by the reality. When you think of like a fact that you know, that is what is called Shraddha. Now, <clears throat> why it is important is because when you do yoga, right, if the, the yoga, the even the asanas, the breathing, the, uh, the, the, the peace of mind you get, you can only get that peace of mind if you have an inherent trust in what you are doing. If you really and truly do not trust your own actions, that peace is gone. I mean, you can strike the best pose, but then you would still be doubting yourself. Oh, am I doing this fire? It is only when 
you have that unshakable trust is when you are able to reap the full benefit. So, that aspect of the mind is called Shraddha. And then it is followed by exactly the opposite, Ashraddha, meaning complete disbelief, which is also a very Rajasic aspect. Now, some of us are naturally trusting of people, of things, and some of us are also deeply distrustful too, you know, because the world has conditioned us in ways where even if you are given the 100% truth with all verifiable facts, there is a small element in you goes, that is the vichikitsa at play, the suspicion. The suspicion, vichikitsa and ashraddha, they only differ in magnitude. A small dosage of vichikitsa is good, you know, to be, to, to, if you do not want it to be taken for a ride. But then ashraddha, becomes a major barrier in any kind of spiritual practice. It is like, you know, you go to school and then when the professor comes in, walks in and they are trying to tell you something, it is not as if you are going to say, I do not trust this professor. If you sit, of course, it is okay to ask questions, but you say, you are going to place some good faith in the, in the person that, okay, they are here to educate me. So, you have a basic level of trust, you know. But if you do not have a basic level of trust and you sit down in the class thinking, oh, this person trying, is trying to con me, you know, I am not, I'm not going to listen to anything. You might sit there, but nothing goes through. It is that element which is being talked here as, which is called Ashraddha. So, we have five so far Kama, Sankalpa, Vichikitsa. Shraddha, Ashraddha. Then the next one is Dhriti. Dhriti is again, this is kind of related to Sankalpa. Dhriti is to have to be assured, giving assurance, to be. Resolute, when you are resolute, right, you have made a decision. What, it, it is that element that lets you make the decision, which is dhriti. Dhriti as in, think of, think of bungee jumping, you know, those people when they do the bungee jumping, I, I always envy them. I, I, I can, I can never put, my, I can never, no matter how strong that rope is, I have very, I have a deep amount of ash, <laughs> ashraddha in, in that bungee, <laughs> in that bungee jumping cord, you know. I, I, I could never, you know, in good faith, jump off of a cliff. But think of people who do that now. Think of the kind of, uh, the, the, the kind of courage. To have faith is one thing. But to actually have the courage to take that action. It is the mind. It is the mind that propels. Like think of how uh, people always say, oh, it is a mental block, right? People always talk about mental block, even the writer's block, right? A big part of the writer's block is, it, is that, oh, if I write, what are people going to say, you know? Oh, this might come out uh, completely wrong. It, this might sound completely horrible. But to cross that and to actually put the words on the paper, that, that aspect that propels the action. That is called dhriti and the exact opposite that which holds it back is a dhriti. Dhriti is the one, is the, is the motivating, uh, it is the motivating force, it is the motivating power. A dhriti is the one that holds us back. And the next one is krihi, it is a little bit of a tongue twister. In English, if you write it, H R I Hri 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 H R I H I. Try saying that five times continuously. Hri Hri H R I H I Hri. There you go. 
you, you, at, at some point you end up with he 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 anyway uh, like uh, as if you as if you are smiling which actually has a connection he he is uh, it has a very interesting function it's like uh, it's the quality of the mind to be uh, to be put on spot to be embarrassed like for example if i say everyone turn your attention to barry right now let's look at him right now see see when you when you do that right and when you put the spotlight on someone unexpectedly right and then i don't start looking at you something in you like what happens to your mind there's an aspect of mind which becomes activated on the spot it's like oh wait a minute why are people looking at me you know yeah that sense of embarrassment call it embarrassment in in, in uh, actually there's a beautiful mantra we also say that in the morning prayer ya devi sarva bhuteshu lajja rupena samsthita it is that lajja another name for hrihi is lajja and then which is also an aspect of the devi the vikshepa power of the devi hrihi is that quality is that uh, propensity of the mind to be now the Upanishads, they say it beautifully. They even say when to exercise Hrihi, that sense of embarrassment. Always be embarrassed when you are giving something to someone. It kind of like sounds counterintuitive. Why should I be embarrassed? Embarrassment because in the sense that, look, I have so much to give out of which I am only able to give you a very small portion of it, which is why I feel, I should feel embarrassed. It's also because it keeps a check on the ego. That, no, 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 it's perfect. Uh, we are, see, we are on the same page. So, that sense of embarrassment you're actually using to a positive end. It's even there, like, uh, uh, in the second line of uh, the favorite bhajan of Mahatma Gandhi, Vaishnava Janato Tere Kahiye, Paradukhe Upakar Kare Toye Man Abhimanena Anire. It's a variation of the same thing. Paradukhe, when you see someone in distress, Upakar Kare, if you are able to help someone, then make sure Man Abhimanena Anire. Make sure that internally you are not getting a boost out of it, which is completely counterintuitive to the social media dominated world we live in. You know, you end up not doing anything, you take a selfie, and then you <laughs> so <laughs> social media, how many likes did I get? Oh, not enough. Anyway, so maybe a puppy, maybe a hurt puppy. No, anyway, uh, the, 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 the more, yeah, see, <laughs> to, to, to beat the algorithm, you know, but Krihi. That's one aspect, and uh, in two more minutes, let's try to finish the two two more. Dihi, dihi is the intellect. Dihi is that part of the mind, the rational part, the the mind that can analyze the the part of the mind that is analytical, and bihi is fear. Fear, like you know, like physical fear. Fear of the snake, fear of uh, fear of the tiger, fear of danger. So these ten aspects, which is the projection power of the Devi, right? In totality, are called the ten. Uh, is what constitutes the manas. And then, why it's beneficial to know this is because every single one that we discussed. Is something that we go through in our everyday lives now. Every single aspect of this to want something, to be courageous, to be fearful, to be embarrassed, uh, to be logical, to be reasonable, to be unreasonable all of this is a very practical aspect that we go through every day. And by bringing the attention toward each one of the function of the mind. The idea is to say, it, the idea is not to keep on dwelling on them. And uh, because the more you dwell on them, the more you get sucked into it. 
in Sanskrit it is called adharmo jignasa meaning even though these are not the this is not dharma adharma meaning the exact opposite of dharma you need to know you need to consciously acknowledge that this is happening so that you can step out of the of the trap anyway so it's 12 30 we shall uh, we could okay <laughs> so so these are the 10 aspects of the mind which is the rajasic now we talked about adharma right the Second part, you know, it's, not a second, it's like a trilogy, you know, it's like what you call the, those uh, moral movies, they never stop at one. Uh, you have the Avengers 1, 2, 3, you know, in the same way, uh, Rajas 1, Rajas 2. You know. So, the second, the second continuing aspect of it is just as how the Sattvic Gunas, you know, are called Dharma. Dharma is a pretty complicated idea in the Indian scheme of things. It has been variously interpreted as, oh, dharma is religion, dharma is duty, dharma as, uh, you know, that which is righteous. It has multiple meanings. In this context, dharma means the natural proclivity. For example, where's Leela? Like a cat. The dharma of a cat is to meow. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, she's right there. The, well, she's snoozing, which is also one of her other dharmas. But the natural dharma of the cat is to meow, right? And the natural dharma of a dog is to bark. Unless it's a very peculiar hybrid, you never hear a dog meow or a cat bark, right? So that is, that's its swadharma. In the same way, these rajasic properties of the maya also have inherent dharmas which use these 10 aspects of the mind to manifest their dharmas now they are called the ari shad varga ari shad varga means six Six adharmic, uh, they are also called ghora dharmas. Ghora means, you know, again, has a few meanings, but ghora means it is like uh, tremendous uh, in, in its negative negativity. Ghora dharma, kama krodha lobha, madamatsara kama lobha moha. They are the arishad vargas. And these Arishad Vargas align themselves greatly with certain aspects of the mind and then create a whole lot of mischief, which again drags us on into the Maya of the world. Now, if we start the Arishad Vargas, it's, uh, it, it'll, it will take a little bit more time. I will continue the Arishad Vargas in the, in the next month because it is a whole thing by itself. But yes, so those are the 10 aspects of the mind and in the next, in our next gathering, we will talk about the Arishad Vargas. Oh yeah, we will also conclude with Om. Om.